Reverend William will lead us in invocation. Remain standing for our place. Let us pray, gracious Heavenly Father, who in times of much greed and disunity and uncertainty, help us to rely completely on the divine guidance and unconditional love. Grant, O oh Lord, that we as public servants can avoid muddy thinking, paltry prejudices, and personal agendas that will lead to everyone's detriment. And I, our mayor, and this council with the wisdom and knowledge and impartiality that will guarantee our administrative staff and employees and the team, the team spirit to have free course to do the work. Oh Lord, that would be beneficial for all the citizens of Goldsboro. Bless our president of these United States of America, his administration, all elected officials appointed, oh Lord, for the betterment of this state. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're going to ask the uh, city clerk if she can call the rule for us. Here. Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Here. 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 Thank you. Next, we have our minutes of our work session and regular meeting, July 23rd, and work session and regular meeting, so August 6th, 12. Move to adopt. Have a motion to accept. Second. Second. Any additions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Public comment period. Anyone who would like to take this time to speak to us for a minute, max of five, I'm sorry, three minutes, we'd be glad to hear from you. Anybody want to speak? Yes, sir. You'd give us your name and mail on your address. Bob Jackson. 109 Aurora Lane, Goldsboro, 7368618. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I noticed in yesterday's paper that you might be considering this evening a proposal to offer a grant to two businesses uh, that are, I believe, opening in Goldsboro City and maybe two others. Um, at some point. Um, when we do a grant, where does the money come from? Is it the taxpayer's money? Or is it a grant that we receive from outside of Ellsboro, from the state, from the federal government? Um, if it's the taxpayer's money, I would hope that we would not be in the business of choosing winners and losers in business with our, with our money. Uh, I don't believe that you can actually buy jobs as a municipality. Um, and I don't think that we are financially able to make the same offer to existing businesses that might be having problems. Uh, who knows, maybe two doors down from one of these two Restaurants uh, is another business that's about to go out of business. Um, where do we stop? Once you get that train rolling, where do you stop it? Um, I am one, uh, a believer in enticing business to come to your city, in this case, by making the conditions such that they would want to come. And the main one being lower taxes. Uh, we had just recently realized a sizable tax increase. And I believe that that keeps businesses from coming to Goldsboro. And when we do that, then we have to turn around and use that money to try and entice businesses to come. But at that point, then we become um, a body that 
chooses winners and losers, in my opinion. Um, I don't know what their answer might be otherwise, uh, but I believe that when we extend their finances to businesses like this, um, we are shortchanging somebody else, uh, and especially the taxpayer. Please consider. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Seeing no signs, we will close the public comment period, and we will uh, we have a presentation. Wayne County Amateur Radio. There he is, sir. Mr. Pete Wayne. These uh, I have been around these people a few years now. They have. Uh, one day each year where they go out and they invite people to come and show them what they can do. I've been so impressed with, with their capability and what they can do in times of emergencies. And I asked them if they would come and share with us a, a, so that our public will know that they are available and they can offer a valuable service to us. Excellent. So, Thank you, Mr. Mayor, you bet. council members, guests. Uh, my name is Pete Ween, WA5T. I'm the president of the Wayne County Amateur Radio Association. Now, amateur radio has been around since the beginning of time. It started back in the 1900s with Guglielmo Marconi, who's the father of wireless, Lee DeForest, who made one of the most significant uh, uh, advancements by inventing the amplifier tube, which then, and coining the term radio. He hated the word wireless. He coined the term wireless. Wayne County has been around since 1946. Uh, we have 36 current members. Uh, licensed amateurs worldwide, we have 3 million licensed amateurs. We have over 702,000 in the United States, 20,000 plus in North Carolina. And if you divide that out by the number of counties, we've got over 2,000 in Wayne County. Amateur radio transcends age, gender, ge uh, gender race, nationality. We have 15% of the ham community in the United States are women. And it's so important that the Chinese children in elementary school study amateur radio. That's how important it is. Uh, what is amateur radio? Uh, both equate it to citizens band. Uh, that was set up in the 40s by the FCC for personal and business communications. It was all just short range. It peaked in popularity in the 70s with such uh, movies as Smokey and the Bandit and uh, C.W. McCall with uh, uh, Convoy. Uh, it's regulated by the FCC, but yet currently you don't need a license. You're limited to five watts of power and, and minimal operating modes, AM, FM, sideband, and CW, which is Morse code. Uh, you have one band of frequencies. It's very limited. Uh, and it's a spin-off, actually, from amateur radio. It was to allow the citizenship easy access to radio without the license constraints of the time. Amateur radio, aka ham radio, is long-range two-way communications. We're worldwide. We've been, uh, it's been around like I say, since the 1900s, it's only been suspended once during World War II because of uh, the long-range capability, the Germans, you know, uh, spies, etc. So they suspended operations and reestablished back uh, at the end of the war, back in 1946. Um, FCC regulated service in conjunction with the International Telecommunications Union and the World Administrative Radio Council. So we're not a isolated community. We have to operate within the world on different frequencies. So we have different uh, unions and different organizations to help um, to regulate that, along with our own FCC. We have four levels of licensing, technicians, general, and extra. And they all have different variations of uh, uh, things you can do. We're limited in power to 1,500 watts versus 5 watts. Uh, we have uh, various modes of operation, AM, FM, sideband, CW, uh, uh, FS, uh, uh, fast and slow scan TVs, and digital data. We have probably 30 different modes of digital data that we can use. 
Uh, we have 16 bands anywhere from 160 meters to 23 centimeters. Okay. Uh, ham radio operations, we operate satellites. You saw our satellite yes, uh, uh, operations. Um, the amateur community has built and launched over 10 different amateur satellites. We usually hook a ride with a payload going up. Yeah, they give us a free wide, uh, ride. It's all donations and everything. Yeah, so we launch our own satellites. We have a ham station aboard the International Space Station, of which we made contact last field day. We have digital communications where we interface our computers with the radio, and we have an echo link communications where we interface the internet with our radios. So ham radio isn't just a small fixed community. I mean, we're very broad in technology. We have Earth, Moon, Earth where you bounce a signal off the moon and receive it on the other side of the earth. Uh, we have both TVs fast and slow scan where you can transmit pictures around the world also. And once a year we operate field day where the amateurs go to the field uh, under the uh, ARRL which is the American Radio Relay League and the Canadian Relay uh, Radio Relay where we set up operations and we operate under field conditions for 24 hours. Field day, it exercises our, our amateur community's ability to operate under emergency conditions. We have, we set up in tents, generators, and uh, just stick up wire antennas, and we operate uh, without the conveniences of home, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, you see the pictures there. We're set up at Greenwood Middle School. We've been there for a couple years. We just throw up a couple tents and, and, uh, and operate out of the tents. The, this individual brought his little trailer, hooked up his generator, all the convenience of home, air conditioning, a little light, and he operates CW, which is Morse code. Morse code. Right. And yeah, he, I, he I made, saw him do that. Right. Yeah. He made over 350 <clears throat> contacts that day, and the guy is phenomenal. Morse code to him is like a language. Wow. But uh, when, when nothing else works, Morse code works. Morse code works. Uh, this is the satellite tent. We had our satellite operations there. We can't, you can't see the antennas there, but they'll track a satellite as it goes across the, the, the sky. The antennas are automatic. Um, radio, uh, amateur radio it has always been partnered with the community to provide communications. Uh, locally, the Wayne County Amateur Radio Association, we, we've supported the Tour to Pickle, which is the... Uh, the bike race, marathon bike race. We've done the MS Walkathon. We've provided communications, and we we work with the Boy Scouts uh, on Jamboree on the air, and several different times during the year. They have uh, where we go out and set up and demonstrate radio to the Boy Scouts. Worldwide amateur radio provides critical communications in support of emergency operations. The first instant of that is the Titanic. Everybody knows the Titanic went down in 1912. Well. They had a radio station aboard there, and as they were sinking, they sent out a CQD, which is All Stations Distress MGY, which was the Titanic's call sign. And it was responded to by about 30 or 40 different ships, of which the California choose to ignore them, and the Carpathia, 58 miles away, sped to, to the rescue. Otherwise, they'd have never known, because they were over the horizon, and their, their flares and, mis and rockets weren't, wouldn't have been seen. So those that survived uh, were all due to the uh, intervention of amateur radio, or radio at the time. Uh, we were at Katrina. The first communications out of New Orleans after Katrina was amateur radio. 9-11 uh, in New York City helped coordinate emergency operations. The Chinese earthquake that devastated part of China. The first, they backpacked in with amateur radio and first communications out. Haiti earthquake. Uh, Hurricane Irene, the emergency uh, center down here lost all communications and uh, amateur radio stepped in and provided them uh, with means to communicate. Amateur radio, in summary, it's a great hobby, promotes fellowship, camaraderie, and advancements in radio, and also provides community-wide critical emergency communication services when called upon. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, and that's what impressed me so much, uh, their capability and what, what they can do. And I saw them talk to the satellites and stuff, and that, when all else fails, these, they can operate. So at some point in time, Scott, I would like for you to get together and see if down the road there's something they can do to help us. 
in times right. of I know they that's can. Right. I just hope we never have an emergency. Well, I hope we don't get but to that that's point. That's why we need you. Yeah. In case we need to plan for it. Right. And I know so what we can do. So uh, thank you so much for coming. Well, we're and more willing uh, to, yes. to to talk and provide service. Yes, sir. Well, I, I would like to comment. This is going to make me go back about thirty-five or forty years. Is that all? That's about all. But, but when you were a teenager, up as a no, I wasn't even well, kind of a teenager. <laughs> okay. But anyway, growing up as a kid, I spent hours with my grandfather every night. He was a ham radio operator, and it was like a family. Mm -hmm. And they were worse than any women's group there is. I mean, they'd get on that radio and talk back and forth. And I talked all over the country. I mean, for hours. Been to ham fest. I'll never forget his uh, call was W4BBQ. I'll just never BBQ. in my life will forget that. But anyway, long story short, you know, I remember something happened one time, like a storm and the power went out, and, and they called a friend, and would you call such and such? It was amazing how they look after each other. Mm -hmm, yeah. When he passed away, several of those guys came to his funeral. You know, it's just it's a yeah. really tight-knit community, and it's amazing what, what they do do, what y'all yeah. do. One of the services that the uh, amateur radio uh, community provided was they manned the Mars stations. And back during the Vietnam War, uh, remember Bear, Senator Barry Goldwater had probably one of the largest um, Mars stations and they pass health and welfare information back and forth to Southeast Asia, hundreds of messages a day, back before we had internet, cell phones, mm, and, and things the, like that. That's the way I found out about my first child, was through the Mars station. Yeah, absolutely. Only, what a service. You know, when nothing movie. else worked, amateur radio was there to provide that kind of support. Well, he yeah. made me some type of telegraph thing where I would, he made, wanted me to learn the Morse code, so I had to tap on this thing and you could hear it back and teach it. I finally learned the Morse code, but I never got my license because I turned 14 or 15. And well, we're going to we're gonna try to have a licensing class uh, in conjunction with the Wayne Community College. Well, that's amazing. Uh, this fall, and, and it's easy. Yeah, yeah it's every time I'm just fascinated by what they do and the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. but their ability to help in times of emergency. They can do things nobody else can do. When your cell phone tower goes down, you're not going to yeah, put a tower back up. You don't need a yeah. cell phone tower. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very Appreciate much, sir. It. Okay. I guess consent agenda. Mayor and Council, I'd Randy and pull that up so you can see it. But the consent agenda had items D through J. You did make one modification to item I, which then was the North Carolina Main Street Solutions Grant, and the appropriation would change from 100,000 to 66,000, and then the expense line would change from 100,000 to 66,000. So, consent agenda items D through J with that one change. Thank you. Any discussion or comments about consent agenda? If not, we'll accept the motion. Mr. Mayor, I move the consent agenda be received. Second. second. And there's second? A motion and a second. Any comments? Any additional comments? If not, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Mayor King? Yes. Mayor Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Consent agenda is approved. Items requiring individual action. Here we have two items this evening, and I'll turn over to Randy Guthrie, our Development Services Director. Our first item requiring individual action is item K. It's a conditional use request, CU-12-12. It's request by Theron and Hadwan. It's for property located on the northwest corner of North William Street. This is North William Street right here, and Hooks River Road, which is right here. This is the subject property shown there on the northwest corner. The applicant requests a conditional use permit to allow the operation of an internet cafe or internet sweepstakes facility. Um, it is a zone general business, and it's just over a half an acre at 0.64 acres. There's an existing three-unit three shopping center on this property. There's the building right here with associated parking and a gas canopy on the property. Um, there's a convenience store with gas pumps. Um, the use for the, the unit proposed for the Internet Cafe, which is located on the end here and shown in the hatch pattern, formerly operated as a laundromat, and there's another vacant unit that has previously been operated as a restaurant. 
Um, the internet sweepstakes facilities or electronic gaming facilities are permitted within a general business zoning district as a conditional use provided they meet all um, ordinance standards. Specific regulations which apply to internet cafes include the following. No establishment shall be located within 200 feet of any residentially zoned or developed property. The subject property is immediately adjacent to a residentially zoned or developed property to the west. Therefore, modification of that separation requirement will be required from 200 feet to zero. The applicant has submitted a floor plan which indicates the proposed uses within the facility. A total of 16 gaming machines are proposed along with an office area and restrooms. That would require a total of 34 parking spaces uh, which will be required based on two spaces per computer slash game and one space per um, employee. The other uses on the property would require 12 parking spaces between the convenience store and the restaurant. So therefore it would require 46 parking spaces and this site has 18 parking spaces located um, across the front of the property so we'll need a parking modification from 46 spaces to 18 spaces in addition there is very little site landscaping across this, the front of this property and so they're requesting a modification of the landscaping requirements as well um, here's the property you can see the building located here this is the unit where the facility is going here's a grass strip located across the front here's the subject building with the gas canopy at the public hearing held on August 20th, two people spoke in opposition to the request. No one appeared in favor. At their meeting held on August 27, 2012, the Planning Commission recommend denial of this conditional use permit request based on the proposed use not meeting the 200-foot spacing distance requirement from residential, not having the required number of parking spaces, and not complying with our landscaping requirements. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Comments? We have a recommendation before us. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move that we deny the request. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion or comment? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion's carried. Our second item on the agenda um, requiring individual action is case Z-8-12. It's request by Wesley Barefoot. It's for property located on the northwest corner of South Berkeley Boulevard and East Elm Street. This is Berkeley Boulevard located right <coughs> here. This is Elm Street. This is the subject property shown here in the hatch pattern. The applicant's requesting a zoning change um, from general business conditional district to allow a conditional district which will allow the operation of an internet gaming or computer sweepstakes facility. The property is just over a half acre at 0.5, uh, 0.55 acres in lot area. It has about 160 feet of frontage on Elm Street and 187 feet of frontage on um, Berkeley um, Boulevard. Looking at the property, it's currently um, shown here as um, General Business Conditional District. You have Shopping Center to the north, Neighborhood Business to the west, and Seymour Johnson Air Force Base located to the south, and some General Business Conditional District located across the um, Berkeley Boulevard. Um, zoning for this property had previously been changed to allow a used car lot and other um, businesses over the years. They now propose in this electronic gaming facility. Um, these types of facilities are allowed provided they meet our ordinance requirements. Um, as mentioned on a previous request, there is a station requirement from residentially developed or zoned properties. There is a residential facility located within 87 feet of this um, property, so it will need a modification of that spacing requirement. Um, there is also an existing internet cafe located on the adjoining property. Um, it's currently operated by the individuals proposing to do this proposed internet cafe. However, even if they relocate, that use is still grandfathered in on that site and another one could go in that location, so they need a spacing modification from that facility as well, which is 200 feet. Um, they have some parking concerns on this property. They need a total, they have a total of 30 computers are proposed, which would require 65 parking spaces based upon our code. So they would need a modification from 65 spaces to 38 spaces due to the number of spaces available. This site has been reviewed um, and commented on by Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Um, they were notified of the proposed use and they requested that the request, if approved, the hours of operation be limited to no later than 9 p.m. Just prior to the public hearing, which was held on August 20th, the applicant orally requested that this matter be withdrawn or denied as a result of Seymour Johnson's um, concerns about the hours of operation being limited to 9 p.m. 
Um, since this request was already advertised and the public hearing was held, we had to proceed forward with the request. The Planning Commission um, at their meeting held on August 27th recommended denial of this change of zone request based upon the owner wishing to withdraw it and because the proposed use not meeting the 200 foot spacing requirement from residential or other um, internet cafes and not meeting the required parking spaces from of 65 to 38. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Guthrie? No, we have a recommendation. Move that we deny the request. A motion and second. Any further discussion? Here no. now, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's denied. That takes care of our consent and items requiring individual action. And Mr. City Manager, I guess. Hear from you. Mayor and Council, the only report I have to say, I would ask Kim Best to come forward and talk a little bit about the joint City County Morning Show. It uh, took off this morning, and for just to, her to remind oh, you of that yeah. and when it's showing, and maybe a little bit about the intent. Well, Bill, we're excited to say today was our first show. It went well. These shows are live. So when you're there with Wayne Alley, you never know what will happen, but it was a fantastic show. It, these shows are Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 a.m. live. Then they'll be aired again at 5.30 in the afternoon. These shows are to focus, or this show is, is there and has been established to focus both city and county departments, um, services that we offer the community, events that are going on to promote them throughout the city and county. So far we've had quite a few interviews and we've, we're already getting feedback from the community on what they like and what they don't like and that's exactly what we expected yeah. and what we encourage. We ask them every day that will be in the, the talk and the conversation to please let us know what do you like, what do you don't, what don't you like, what would you like to see changed or focused on and we'll adjust to meet those needs. But the focus in this is to have another means to communicate with our community and to pass this information out and be able to showcase a little bit about what the city and the county both have to offer with our services and our programs. I think it's a great idea. You can take care of Wayne Alley. <laughs> He's good at that. what he does. I know. I'll give him full credit. Is, He's very good. Well, it's a great partnership between us and the, and the county, and we are excited that this is a partnership that we hope lasts a long time. We expect it to. So if you all have... Once you watch the show, 7 a.m. live and then 5.30 in the afternoon, if you have suggestions or things that you would like to see changed or on the show, you let us know as well. We invite the community to do the same. Thanks, Cam. Sure. We appreciate it. Looking Thank you. forward to watching it. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Mayor, Mayor Council, that's all I have this evening. Okay. Mr. Attorney? No reports. Mayor and Council members? Uh, Mr. Mayor Bojan? No reports, sir. Michael? None from me, Mr. None for me. No report. No report. The only thing I have to say is, uh, Mr. Broadway and I toured the uh, the public works, the city garage, the uh, water plant, the wastewater treatment plant, the, the compost plant, the police and fire department last week. You know and. I have a new respect for a lot of our employees. <laughs> they have to know a lot of high technology. Yeah, and, you will and when, once you see what they do. When we, when we cut on the water and when we flush the toilet, we have to realize there's somebody working somewhere to make sure that everything gets taken care of. Did you have a waste treatment plant? Oh, yeah. It makes yeah. you really appreciate it, doesn't it? Well, yeah, he, <laughs> Scott made us look at things that... that uh, <laughs> That uh, Karen, Scott, Karen, Scott Karen said you, she didn't want to show Scott it to us. Scott knew that you needed Scott. to see that. You see, Carol and she's oh well, if they don't want to. But you know, I, 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 I will say, Goldsboro's got a lot of good employees that the we best. that I'm proud of. The best uh, that I'm proud of. No and good. like I say, it gives me a new respect for uh, for 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 those guys. And I even think, like I've said before, the sanitation department when when you see that they're out in any kind of weather. And, and He's, doing, I will put our sanitation department against any anyway. I get more compliments about sanitation, and you know, I hired a lot of those guys 25, 30 years ago. They are absolutely awesome. You and I have discussed we several have. of them. We have. They I are, taught them, and they were good. Yeah, they were good you, guys. They were good you, guys then, and they're good and guys they're now. They're still good guys. They sure are. I'm proud of them. Glad you had a chance to do that. Uh, I just uh, mentioned one thing. I was asked to go out to Busco Beach this weekend for a couple of things. We had Marines from Camp Lejeune 
training bikes and the dirt bikes and these guys uh, got a chance to meet them and talk to them. They're going to be going to Afghanistan here and they're going to be putting, <laughs> they're going to be doing there what they practice here. And they said it was extremely good training for them, but you know, nothing in, is like what they're going to be up against. But then they had 40 states who came to Buster <coughs> Beach on Friday and Saturday for national dirt bike competition. And the number two in the country was there, number three, and it's something that's really amazing. And I think it has so much potential for so many things. And I was glad to go out there and be a part of that. But it's, you get a chance. You, you want to see some, some of the best in the world riding dirt bikes and competition? I'd encourage it. Is, is there Rainer, anything we, else? We do have two closed session items. If, we could, if you have 10 more minutes, um, one for litigation, one for property acquisition. So we uh, will adjourn here to go into closed session. I have a motion. Mr. Mayor, I have a question that we adjourn to go into closed session. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, let it be known, Ms. and I. Opposed, same. Motion carried. We're in closed session. We want to go back to the ante room.